Hey guys, Christina here, and I'm really excited to share with you today our 2023 through 2024 homeschool year curriculum choices. Now, if you're new here, I am, like I said, Christina, homeschooling mom to five children in the Canadian Maritimes. This specific video is gonna focus on my children who will be in grades two, five, and eight. I'll have a second video coming a little bit later that focuses on my older children who will be in grades nine and 11. I will put timestamps down below for the different subjects if you're wanting to just look something up or jump ahead. Many, most, many of the curriculums that I'm gonna talk about, I have done reviews of them. So I'll link up top somewhere and maybe in the description below as well. The playlist, I have over 70 reviews I've done of curriculum, although there are a few new things this year. So first, let me apologize if you hear the fan going overhead, it's a very hot day here, which I remember last time I filmed, it was very hot as well. So it's a hot day, but I'm gonna turn the camera around and give you a look at everything that those three children will be doing for school next year. All right, I'm gonna start with math because I think that's just the simplest to show you. I haven't pulled all the components of each curriculum out, but here's an idea. So this is Saxon Math 2. My son in grade two will be using this. He will be my fourth child. I've had three already do this and it works great for our family. We like it. So we're just sticking with it. So that will be his math. Then my daughter in grade five will be doing Saxon Math 5-4. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think I've had three kids do this as well. You can see it's pretty beat up. <laughs> but again, it works for us, we like it. So, just sticking with it. So then it should be no surprise <laughs> that my son in eighth grade will be doing Saxon as well. He'll be doing Algebra 1 half. We typically have our kids do Saxon 8, 7 and Algebra 1 half. I feel like it's just a good review if they're really strong in math and if they're not, it really helps them get it set up for Algebra. So these are what the books look like. That's pretty straightforward. That will be the kids math. English. Likewise, we have used the Good and the Beautiful language arts for many years. So my son in grade two will be using level two. He'll be the second child I've had use this edition, but he will be my fifth child. He's actually used level two from the Good and the Beautiful. So it's all here ready to go. There's a few more components, um, but pretty simple and straightforward. Likewise, my daughter will be doing the level five. This is a new level for us, or a new edition of the level, I should say. So there's the watercolor book, the instructions, and this is the paper, the template sheets, which this is kind of nice to have because sometimes transferring in the past, what they see onto the watercolor has been really challenging, so I'm glad to see this. And then for the course book, I actually divided it in half. I felt like it was really thick. <laughs> so that's the first half, this is the second half. This child, my daughter is left-handed and so I like to bind things at the top for her. But that will be her English and there's again, more components, but that's the basis of it. All right, so the child in Grade eight, this is where it changes a little bit. So I'm gonna have him do three of the level eight book studies. So The Touch of Magic and The Story of My Life, it's a book that's all combined in one. So he's gonna do that book study. He's gonna do Wild Like the Foxes. And then this one, Abraham Lincoln one, is a new one to us. Um, in the past, we'd only done these two, but since they now offer these for free, I decided to download it and have my son do this as well. So these are the three book studies from The Good and the Beautiful he'll be doing. They have different amounts of lessons in there. Let's see if it says in the front. It doesn't. There's usually anywhere from like 16 to yeah, to 30-ish. So this one has 28. So they don't take that long. I suspect my son, depending on how he wants to set it up, he'll be done with these by like Christmas time. And then I'm gonna move into Write Shop with him. Um, I've talked a bit about this before, that I feel like for 
grade eight. My kids aren't ready for the high school from the good and the beautiful and there's only three levels of that anyways. So I don't really wanna start them on the high school too early. So I like to have them focus on just a writing program because I find sometimes the good and the beautiful is a little bit lacking in the writing part. I've tried a few different ones, I have reviews. Decided to go with Write Shop this year. Now, I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna have him do just the one, the two, or both together. Cause it's, it's divided into one and two, but it's actually a continuation on. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I don't, I don't feel like it's too much to do this in a year with the other book studies, but I may just kind of take it bit by bit and see how he does. I narrowed the options down for him and this is what he chose. He wanted to do the right shop. Um, I took the book apart and bound them myself. That's why it looks like this. And I reuse these covers. That's why they're a little cloudy looking. But you can see at the beginning here for level two, it just continues on. So the last one ended on lesson 16. So I'm gonna kind of feel this out and see how he does and think about it. But this is what his writing program for his English is gonna be. All right, so next up is science. So for science, I have my children in grades two and five grouped together. We're gonna to be doing Apologia's Exploring Creation, Zoology One, um, Flying Creatures of the Fifth Day. This is the new edition. And I've used one of their new editions before and I like it so much better than, <laughs> can you hear my rooster out there? Um, he always wants to be on film, but I like it better than the older version. So I'm gonna have my daughter in grade five do the book, the student journal. This is the actual teaching book or textbook. I decided not to get a notebook for my son in grade two. I felt like there just wasn't enough in there to kind of justify the cost and the use. So he'll still be listening, taking part, but he won't be necessarily writing that much. However, I do have two of these bird watching notebooks from The Good and the Beautiful. They are for grades three to eight. So a little bit beyond him, but I felt like it was simple enough that he could join in and do this. I haven't decided if we're gonna do this at the beginning of the year or at the end of the year because living in a Northern climate, birds are more scarce in the winter but we're gonna be doing these as well. And these are kind of like a keepsake that they can keep afterwards as well. And then along with that, we're also gonna be doing this read aloud, the story of John J. Audubon, Audubon, hopefully I'm saying that right, from The Good and the Beautiful, it's a level seven. And um, when I do read alouds, all my kids listen in, so they will all get to hear this book. But that's gonna be the basis of our science for those two children for the year. And then next is my son in grade eight. He's gonna be doing Exploring Creation with General Science. I've had two other children use this course in grade eight and it works pretty well to just give a really good overview of science and to kind of do a good reminder, but diving a little bit deeper than maybe we did in elementary years, as well as kind of propelling them on to what they're interested in, giving them some ideas. The book's pretty, pretty beat up. And he has a student notebook. Like I said, I have reviews of all these things you can see, but that's what his science is gonna be. So he will be doing his science on his own for the first time this year. And we found that this is kind of a good transition into doing science on their own. So next up is history. We're continuing on with the story of the world. So all three children will be doing this. Uh, we are on volume two. The Middle Ages. This is our second time going through the story of the world. So we're just going to continue with that. I like to add in, and I've already scheduled some activities, um, things like cooking. I have lots of videos, oh, documentaries, a few art projects. Um, hopefully we'll have some family art nights again, as well as I like to use these lists of corresponding literature and additional history reading and take things out of the library each week that correspond with what we are doing. So that is the main history. 
So the way I have it set up is we have this history timeline notebook. This is from School Nest, which I love these books. Um, I have it linked in my Amazon storefront, which you can find the link down below if you're interested. Um, so <laughs> I'm behind. I have all these um, things I need to put in. These were separate. Ooh, I'll try and remember to put a link down below where I found these from because I don't remember right now. I need to catch up on the ancient history one and then my kids will be helping with the Middle Ages and filling the timeline out as we go through history this year. And then what I have is for my youngest, so grade two, to do these notebooking pages that I've had my other children do in the past. So each chapter has a little thing for them to cut out and sometimes they write things in, sometimes it's a little like coloring thing. So this is chapter 16. You can see here who it's by. Um, and I'll try and remember to put the link below. And you cut out and you put it together. I've showed before when I did reviews how the book at the very end looks like once the kids have done the whole notebook. But I just buy these really simple exercise plain books from Hillary and just put it in. I have learned that you need to kind of alternate where you put them, otherwise you get this really fat in the middle. <laughs> you have to kind of alternate sides, but that's what he will be doing for grade two, so I'll be helping him with that. The older two children will be doing these books. They are the maps that go along with it, as well as the tests. I've talked about before how we do these, so they each have a book like this to do that. And along with that, we also do a lot of read-alouds. So these are just the books I have on hand that I've chosen. So The Bedouins, Giselle, A Loyal Foe, Beware Princess Elizabeth, The Saracen Seed, Saracen Seed, Steed, I'm gonna have to find out how to say that, The Falcon of Eric the Red, The White Stag, I Was There, Viking Invasion. This is a independent read for one of my kids, The Vikings in Ireland, The Golden Hawks of Genghis Khan, and then I have a number of books from the library and I believe two or three, I think two audiobooks scheduled as well. So I really love adding literature to our history, but I found sometimes it can just be overwhelming. So this past year I did one book every two weeks. This year it's about the same, some it's one every three weeks. So I've tried to give myself a little more grace while still getting some really good books in. So let me just move this and I'll show you the last part here. So along with history, geography, all that, we really love these great world adventures. We're gonna be doing understanding Northern and Central Asia this year. This is something that all my children in all grades, we all do it together. So we're gonna be doing this one first for the first part of the year and then we're gonna be doing Understanding South America. And I just felt like these two areas went really well along with Story of the World Volume 2, the areas they're talking about. So it gives information on history and it kind of combines with that, but then it also shows the result of that history and what things are like today. So those are the two that we're gonna be doing for that. And finally, electives. So we are continuing to go through Farm Anatomy, The Curious Parts and Pieces of Country Life by Julia Rothman. We're using a daily skill building book that goes along with it. This is my book and I am behind where my kids are because <laughs> I really wanted to do one as well. Um, but we just do one like spread, so two pages once a week. And we just slowly go through. I need to finish this and we'll just continue working on that this year. And this is all my children. Again, we do this all together. I just found it's a way to make use of these books instead of them just sitting on the shelf because they are beautiful books, but they are also really full of knowledge and information. And then this, I am still debating if I'm gonna introduce this this year. We've done this once before with my kids, the What To Do When It's series. It is by Oh, what's it called? American Psychological Association. It's geared towards ages six to 12 and they have a whole series. We've done a number of them. 
it's been a while since we've done these. So I may do these with my younger two children, I'm thinking. Um, Cause I don't think they, they would have been too young the first time we did it to remember anything. I think I'm gonna add this in. I'm still figuring out how I'm gonna add it in, but I think it's time to do this book. So we're gonna do this one again. And then the last thing I don't have anything to show you right now is French. Um, maybe I'll turn the camera around and talk a bit more about that. Whew, made it through all those books. That's so hot. Um, so I was mentioning French. I have my children do workbooks. I'm still figuring out exactly which level and I'm always looking for new workbooks to figure that out. So they do a workbook. They also do Duolingo as well as we do a rotation of books, music, videos, and Monsieur Steve on YouTube. My youngest, I think will be joining the online French this year, Duolingo, he has been asking, so I think he's ready. We'll see kind of how he does with the reading, but I think he's ready. So that's French. Um, I don't have anything else. I'm uh, hoping to get them back into piano lessons, hoping to get them into some swimming or gymnastics, but it's kind of up in the air at this point. That's what the year is gonna look like for my younger children. So again, grades two, five, and eight. If you have any questions about anything I've mentioned or the curriculum, or just in general, go ahead and leave it down below in the comments section. And otherwise, I hope this has been helpful and useful and that it finds you having a great day. Take care.